Now to the hippies who refuse to say die. It's 20 years since the Aquarius Festival at Nimbin knocked off, uh, kicked off the alternative lifestyle movement in Australia. At the weekend, they went back to remember when. Ben Cheshire reports on the hippie reunion. We can do things without having to have entrepreneurs to tell us how to do it. We don't have to have barbed wire um, at the gates. Um, we don't have to have policemen ordering our affairs. It was that, that peak of excitement at the end of the um, anti-war, anti-conscription movement when anything seemed possible, the Whitlam government had been elected and uh, we're out to change the world. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to go from here and carry on with this way of life, you know? Like a lot of people have already offered land that, for people to live on. Yes, it has gone on. Here we are 20 years later in a thriving town. Um, directly after the festival, we created the, one of the largest community world. They came from all over Australia, 8,000 of them, transforming a dying rural town into a hippie paradise. What started out as just the annual party for the Australian Union of Students became a cultural turning point. We're here to remember the Aquarius Festival 20 years ago. I want to say how good it is telling stories and remembering what happened at Aquarius and how it changed our lives. At the weekend, they came back, just a few dozen this time, to mark the anniversary with the hippie equivalent of an Anzac dawn service. The spirit of light, the spirit of life, and the spirit within. We had a kitchen here, a yep. big kitchen, we had a great big fire that, you know, sometimes yep. there were over people sitting around at night. Yep. And uh, lots of music. Yep. Lots of fun. Lots of kids. Paul Joseph and Nick Shand haven't been back to this spot for almost 20 years. Back then, Nick lived in a tree house here and Paul was known as the Donovan of the Aquarius Festival. And we always used to tromp around and then go off uh, in the morning singing yeah. across the fields and Paul playing his guitar and everybody sort of uh, hopping along behind. And it was a wonderful thing, yeah. And, uh, do you still remember every word from that song you led in 1973? May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. And you still live by that? I'd like to. I'd like to think I did. In the valleys around Nimbin, there are plenty of people still trying to follow the aquarium spirit. Here at All Falls Cooperative, 100 adults and almost as many children share a 2,000 acre property. Are you ready for drilling? Yeah. This place is literally a legacy of 1973. It was started by people who came to Nimbin for the festival and never left. They wanted change and after years of struggle, they got it when governments had to change the laws to recognise multiple occupancy. And there are legacies of Aquarius. Organic food, home birthing, solar energy, green politics. Ideas which first flowered at the festival and are now commonplace. So it's a surprise when the residents say they don't want to celebrate the 20th anniversary. We were approached to accommodate and house uh, some of the um, festivities that were going on. And it was ba basically voted no. I think we just had enough. We had a 10 year festival 10 years ago and uh, just uh, felt it was, it was really invasive and um, just want to be left alone. <laughs> this pseudo liberated state, so repressed and uh, incredibly straight. In May 1973, the citizens of Nimbin found themselves in the centre of a social revolution. Their quiet country village was gone forever. I can hardly bear to see. For those old-time residents, the 20th anniversary is nothing to celebrate. 
If anything, it's a day of sorrow. The kids up here would like to keep them because they're so nice. Were you at all worried about them at the beginning? Yes, I was. And what made you change your mind? Just seeing you kids. Them being younger, they can't understand why we are so set in our ways. It's only a natural reaction in the young, and there it is. Well, that's where the biggest problem comes in. Try walking down the street here that you see so few of the traditional old, older residents. It seems like they're... Yeah, they tried them out of town. <laughs> oh, the old farmers out of there. <laughs> Just don't like to uh, say out the words. Junkies are taking over the place. That's the main thing. The place should be cleaned up a bit, and everyone should be happy after that. Eh? Best candy in England, too. <laughs> Thanks to its reputation for tolerance and for drugs, Nimbin continues to attract the young. A whole new generation of dissatisfied has made its way here. Locals have christened them the Ferals, and unlike the dope-smoking hippies of previous years, the Ferals have attracted hard drugs. It's a real downer to be around because, uh, uh, like, this is really low-energy stuff. This is the very opposite of what we aim for. This is like consciousness contracting stuff. What's the downside of the Aquarius legacy? I don't think there is a downside. I don't think there is a downside. There's life, and life changes, and life has its ups and downs. Nimbin just to be that sort of flame to moths, and all of these lost souls are looking for somewhere to go, and it's a fairly friendly place. We need a lot more friendly places in Australia. Never long time sunshine upon you all love around you and the pure light within you guide your way on may a long time sunshine upon you all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way home we were a gen dared to dream dared to do something differently and i want the point of this ceremony this commemoration to pass on the dreaming so that young people dare to dream and create a future for themselves. The These days, we Paul Joseph, Nimbin the Baker. wandering minstrel of 1973, the is a marketing the consultant Aquarius in Armadale. Graham Dunstan, one of the brains behind the Aquarius Festival, is currently unemployed. Do you call yourselves ageing hippies now? <laughs> we call ourselves cultural artefacts. <laughs> well, are there some things that you look back on and wince? Oh. Uh... We were young and optimistic. Um, we dream big dreams, and some of them seem crazy now. Just the other night, Johnny and Graham had a meeting, and they talked about how they were against the bureaucracy before the festival began, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of the festival, Johnny and Graham became the bureaucracy. Look back on it, it was uh, somewhat embarrassing to have that attitude. But in terms of revolution throughout society, I think realistically that's what it's all about. If you can get together in large numbers of 5,000 and exist you know, with gentleness and love, and it works, well, Christ, that's, <laughs> that's a sign that we may well survive a century. I still believe it. The urgency is undiminished. From Eastern scriptures, we can learn about the carb cone when the aquarian rapture has taken its turn then is it each one to his own